I do, I do enjoy listening to you, India. Arsenal uh, win back possession, and it's broken nicely to Gazzola. 30 metres from goal, plays it to the edge of the air. Alexis Sanchez goes for goal and scores. That's a brilliant goal from Alexis Sanchez. He's been Arsenal's star man this season, and maybe now they're going to get the point. All right, guys, this is Andy and Mike with uh, Gunners in USA, and today we are joined by the creator, host, and mastermind behind Arsenal Fan TV, Robbie. Robbie, how are you? Hi, I'm good. I'm good. Um, you know, it's, it's just at home chilling. There's been no games. Well, there's no Arsenal game today, which is unusual for a Saturday, so... My family all looking at it thinking, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, no, so it's good. It's good. Yeah, well, thank you Excellent. very much for joining us. Yeah, and uh, no everyone every, everyone knows, of course, Robbie, uh, the Arsenal Fan TV. The, would you say it, is it the largest uh, supporter-run independent YouTube channel that has to do with an English Premier League team? Do you have stats on that? Yeah, definitely. Um, YouTube, the guys at YouTube say we're the number one. So uh, I suppose, yeah, I'll, I'll take that. You know, so yeah, yeah. So we are the biggest at the moment. Yeah, no reason to be modest when there's no reason to be modest. So, uh, <laughs> so, so take us back to how the whole thing started. I mean, when and why did you first think to bring a camera to to the stadium and start uh, start interviewing people, or is that not how it started? Tell us about it. it. Well, that is how it started, really. I mean, um, I just, I, I had the idea um, for quite a while. Um, I mean, you know, sometimes you have an idea and you think, yeah, you know, this could work. This could be something that could be really good. But, you know, you don't really execute it. Um, and then I just eventually thought to myself, you know what, I, I need to do this thing, man. I, I want to be able to have a platform where we hear from fans of Arsenal. Because we never ever hear from the fans. All we ever hear from is the the so-called pundits, ex-players, uh, so-called experts. And I was like, you know, the, why don't we never hear anything from the fans? And they're the ones that are always at the games. They're the ones that are always watching games at stupid hours and stuff like that. And we <laughs> never hear anything from them. So I'm like, you know, I wanted to create this platform where we could hear from the fans. But I had no experience in, I had no YouTube page, I had no Twitter page, no Facebook, nothing. I, I, I had no experience in social media whatsoever. I didn't know how to film. I didn't have a clue, but I, you know, I'd had the idea for so long. I was like, you know, I'm just going to do it and see what happens. And then I asked a friend of mine, good friend of mine, uh, to build a website for me before. Um, if he could uh, do a website for for this, for what I was setting up, and he sort of saw the idea and that, and he's like, "Well, you know what? I do I do film." And he goes, "I said, do you?" I said, "I didn't know." That. He said, "Yeah, I sort of do some sort of part time work at a film, you know, sort of a film production place." Um, so we got to borrow a camera, we borrowed a microphone, and we went down by the Emirates and we just started filming. And was it, it was a big, was it a big red microphone <laughs> at the time? <laughs> it wasn't. It wasn't a big red microphone to start off with. It was. It took us a while to even get that um, cover for the microphone. The, I remember the camera we used to use was a, wasn't a digital camera. It was a nice camera because we borrowed it. It was quite an old camera, but it wasn't digital, so it was a tape camera. So that means that, like the process of mm. getting videos up was like three four times as long as how we're able to do it now you know because uh you had to wait for the tape to play right out so if you filmed an hour and a half worth of footage you had to wait for it an hour and a half before you could actually oh, start geez. processing it you know so it was a really <laughs> long boring process but yeah what time frame was this started. what what time frame was this do you remember like what year this was a uh, 2012 Oh, wow. So it was. Uh, we started off in, um, I think it was about November, 2012 was when we done our first game, um, and that was. Uh, I think it was Tottenham we played actually because I was like, oh, let's start off. Well, we played Tottenham. We beat them five two. Oh, yeah. uh, we interviewed some fans was that the, after the was game. That the, was, was that the Adebayor red card game? Oh, oh was it? Because uh, we I beat think, them five two twice, isn't it? Yeah, I can't yeah, remember back. which one it was, but. Yeah, but um, yeah, I think it, it could have been that one. Um, yeah, there was a lot of happy fans that day. There was no rants, by the way. 
<laughs> you know, so. and, and that was one of the good old ask, days, you know. Do you, do you remember who your first interview was? It, it must have been a happy person that day, but do you remember who it was? Uh, yeah, it was this guy. Um, he sort of had. A, I, I met him again the other day, actually, which was really weird. And you know, I met him in, um, at the game in the North Bank, and he was like, "He goes, remember, I was your first interview." I said, "Yeah, yeah, I remember you, sort of." The first person I interviewed. But actually before, that was the first interview I did. But the first actual interview we ever had on the channel wasn't done by me. It was done by a friend of mine who interviewed. Um, there was Arsenal had played Reading um, in that game where we had that crazy comeback. 7-5. And yeah. there was a fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there was a fan that all the newspapers and media and everybody said left at halftime. The yeah, like, that's do you, right. Do you remember that guy? Yeah, yeah the one yeah. that was walking out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he didn't actually leave at halftime. He was—he just was so pissed off with what was going on. He just left early to go and get a drink, and then he came back and wants the second half. And yeah, they showed him was, walking um, to the concourse. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was a friend. He was um, actually um, a friend of mine's cousin. So we were like, oh wow, we start off with a like a scoop. You know what I mean? So <laughs> do you remember who was the, put people you, straight? Do you remember who the keeper was for that game, Robbie? Well, for Arsenal? Yeah. Oh, who was keeping that day? Was, I'll give you a clue. You, start, you started on Wednesday night for us. <laughs> Martinez, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. He changed his That's name. Been was, a while, hasn't he? He yeah. was going by Damien back then. Now he's Emiliano because that game, that game yeah. uh, it, it, it threw him off so much he had to change his name. <laughs> what Same a crazy though. game that was but that that was actually our first video that was our first video on the channel it's pretty poorly shot it was just you know it's, but that was our first video but the actual first video that I did interviewing fans was that Spurs game and uh, yeah and then just from there I think the next game after that was Aston Villa because when we first started it we were like right we're going to do all the home games and we did that first game and it went quite well you know we was, we was really happy with how it went and I was like Let's try an away game. The next week we were playing, I think it was Aston Villa away. I was like, let's try that. And we went and we did that. And um, we went on the coach and we did that away game. And then after that, we just realized that, you know what, we have to do every game home and away. You yeah. know, we're just, just going to have to do it because the, the, the away game got the, the, the response we got from doing the away game was incredible because one of the things we quickly realise is that most fans have never, ever been to an away game in their life. So they really found it interesting to see what it was like at an away ground, you know? So, yeah, it was just from there. That's where it begun. So, Robbie, do you feel like... Uh, two questions. What was your original vision for Arsenal Fan TV? And back when you did your first interview, did you ever expect it to get to this point? where you're being interviewed by Gary Neville, you're known globally around the world. Um, so tell, tell us a little bit about that original vision and now if you ever thought it would be this big. Well, my original vision is I thought, you know what, I think this could be successful. Obviously, I, I, I wouldn't have started it if I didn't think it would get any response. So I was like, I think this will be a successful. I think Arsenal fans, after a while, will be interested in this because, you know, we're giving it from a fan's perspective – we're sort of showing them a different side of, of, of Arsenal that you don't see on TV. So I thought it'd be successful in that way. Um, did I think I'd be getting interviewed by Gary Neville and everywhere I go, everybody knows who I am and I'm turning on my TV like this morning, my kids were like, Dad, come and watch this. And I was like, what is it? And then I go, yeah. it was like Football Focus, BBC, they were interviewing me. I mean, you know, I never, ever thought all that would happen. That, that has kind of blown me away. Um, so no, I didn't, I, 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 as I said, I thought it had a chance of being successful, but not on the scale on which is kind of happening at the moment where quite literally I go to my local shop and people are stopping and asking me for pictures. I, I never envisaged that ever. Yeah. Now, is this, and, and, and I can edit this out if you don't want to answer this question, but I'm just curious, is this now, <laughs> is this now your full-time job or do you still? This, yeah. Yeah. This is my full-time job. I mean, when I first started, it wasn't my full-time job. Um, and you don't have to edit it out, keep it in, keep everything in. But, cool. um, no, when, when I, when I first started, um, this was not, um, my full-time job. I, I worked, I used to work as a building surveyor and, uh, 
then I was just doing Arsenal fan TV as like you could almost call it like a hobby at the time. Mm-hmm. Wasn't making no money off of it. I mean, as a matter of fact, um, my job was financing Arsenal fan TV. <laughs> so every every penny that I was making, everything extra that I had was going into buying cameras, buying tickets, buying transportation. You know, I mean, everything was just going into Arsenal fan TV. So. And it was very tough, you know what I mean? Because, you know, there's a lot of nights, like especially evening games and that, you don't get a lot of sleep. You've got to go work the next day. You've got to juggle work with this as it was getting bigger and bigger. Um, you know, I can say it now I had to sneak out of work quite a few times <laughs> to go to attend meetings or sometimes people would ask me to come and feature on things and I'd be like, I can't turn that opportunity down because that's going to help. Arsenal fan TV a lot, but they'll be, I'll be like, when is it? And they will be like, yeah, um, it's at 12 o'clock. I'm like, how am I going to do that? I'm at work. But the, the, I was kind of lucky in a way that the job I was doing, um, I was out, and it, it, the job took me out and about because I just have to go and survey a lot of properties. Mm-hmm. So what I had to do sometimes, I'd have to kind of sneak out, say, say you guys wanted me to do a podcast, for instance, I'd sneak out, go and do that podcast between 12 and 2, and then sneak back to work, and then <laughs> just make sure that, like, when I got to work, work as hard as possible, so they never suspect that, you know, I'm, I'm, my work is slacking off because I'm doing this. So I, I actually, I actually had to start working harder at work because I really didn't, I really didn't want my work to drop off there and for them to say, oh, well, what's going on, you know? Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was working longer days at work to compensate for the Arsenal fan TV thing. So it was really tough at first. Nice. Well, that sounds, that sounds familiar, doesn't it, Andy? I mean, I, we, we're, we're often <laughs> interrupting Andy's work day with the time difference and all that, although his boss doesn't listen to this, does he? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> so, so the post-match interview. Yeah. <laughs> Robbie, the post-match interviews, it's, it's not the entirety of what uh, AFTV is all about, which may come no. as a surprise to a lot of people, actually. But, uh, yeah. you know, it, it, we'll talk about all the other pieces that you do beyond the pre- and post-game stuff. But kind of yeah. logistically speaking, what, what are you, what, how many people do you typically interview after a game? What, how long are you usually uh, there after a game? I'd say um – at a home game, we'd interview anything between about 15 to could be rise to about 25 people after a game because, you know, our home game, uh, obviously people stick around longer. There's, you know, there's more people nowhere to find where you are and it's a lot easier to interview people. At away games, because fans disperse so quickly because, you know, fans have got to get home. They've got to get on coaches. They've got to get on. And typically at football grounds, um, they try to get the away fans away from, you know, for safety reasons, they try and get them away from the ground as quickly as possible. So it can be 10 to 15 at an away game. It's a little bit less than an away game, um, more at a home game. Um, how long would we be there? Well, if I gave you an example, like the other night, um, the game against, the other day, the game against West Ham, which was an evening game. Um, what time did that game finish? Yeah, it was pretty finished about quarter to ten UK time. Uh, by the time we finished interviewing, editing, titling the videos, making sure everything's up and around and about or on social media, I think we'd finish by about two, three a.m. in the morning. Mm. Um, so yeah, when everybody's long gone and <laughs> you know they're at home, uh, we're still editing videos and even sometimes after that when I once I get home you still again again have to kind of look around social media just to make sure that with the videos are sort of flowing to all the right avenues so it's quite a long process after the game I mean that takes longer than like everything that goes on before the game to be honest yeah, I bet. And, um, you know, those who have been watching for a while will recognize a number of regularly featuring guests and, and most regular yeah. watchers know their names. The question, and, and I, I'm going to put a quick uh, plug in for lead judges because, uh, I, 
I'm biased because I've I've met Lee. I've talked to him a lot. We uh, we've been on a yeah, pod, nice uh, other bro. podcast together. Just f- freaking love that guy, and and uh, he's mm. positive when he should be positive, and he's negative when he should be negative. So that he's my personal yeah. favorite. But the question is, did you? I mean, did you know any of these guys before their first appearance on on Arsenal Fan TV, or were they just random mm. people who became regulars? Everybody's just a random person. I didn't know one of these guys before I started doing Arsenal Fan TV. Not one of them. Um, so, you know, that's, you know, people say to me, oh, did you, a guy said to me one time, do you audition? And I just started bursting out laughing. I was like, audition? <laughs> you know, we literally, every single fan that's come on Arsenal Fan TV has just like, come on. You know, um, I remember when I met Claude and Ty, I was uh, on the, 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 the game that I told you about, the one with um, Aston Villa. Um, so we went, we travelled on the supporters coach for that game. That's the only time we've ever done that, actually, because we then realised that the amount of time we need after the game, we can't go on a coach because, as I said, they try and get him away from the game too quickly. But I remember the coach driver um, said, he goes, if you want to interview two people, he goes, there's two guys at the back of my coach. He goes, one's, he goes, there's a black guy and a white guy, right? He goes, that guy down there with the headphones and that one. He goes, they'll argue all the way up to a game and all the way back. <laughs> he goes, they disagree on everything. And that was Claude and Ty was talking about. <laughs> and, uh, and I also met Bully on that coach as well. But I didn't know any of these guys before I started going to, before I started, um, Arsenal fan TV. I used to go to Highbury. I used to go to Emirates, you know what I mean, with my friends, but I've, I've never met any of these guys before. It's quite literally, we've just stood up and, you know, when we first started doing Arsenal Fan TV, we had to beg people to come on. People would be walking past and we'd be like, do you want to, you know, do you want to come on and say some, something? And people would be like, oh, get lost. Who are you lot? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> and stuff like that, you know? And now, yeah, so now you got people just, walking around saying, where, where do they, where do they film from? Where do they film from? I got to yeah. find this guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So listen, it, it was like, you know, people have just like over a period of time, some of these guys have come on. They've been very charismatic, some of them, and they've just become very popular. I think Troop's only, who's like probably one of the most popular people who come on at the moment, he's only been coming on Arsenal Fan TV probably just since, I think it was since the end of last season. He's only been coming really? on about just over a year or so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, I certainly I, don't remember him from much before. Yeah, um, because much I, before I, remember when... the, I remember the day when we interviewed Troops. It was a really funny one because uh, where we were filming... I can't remember what happened, but we we had to pack up from where we was filming, where we normally film. We'd film some videos, and then we packed up from there, and then we um, moved. And then I, I still needed to do a video. I do this video with sort of what we call the player ratings. And I was saying to my camera guys, going, oh, we haven't done the player ratings video. And we was right down the other end of the ground. And then I saw troops, and he was like going, oh, can I say something? And I go, mate, sorry, mate, it's too late. I go, we've finished doing all our interviews already. I just want to do the player ratings. And he's going, oh, you know, I just really wanted to. I, I can't remember what, what game it was, but I think we, we'd we lost. And he's going, oh, I really wanted to say something. And well, he's kind of bugging me. So I said, okay, I'll tell you what. We, 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 we'll, get, we'll get you on just before I do the player ratings. I was kind of almost doing it like I just, I'll get him on to get rid of him kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> And then he came on and he was very charismatic. I was like, straight away, I was like, oh, this guy, he's he's a bit of a character. You know, he really knows his football. He's really passionate. And what I liked about him, he was a bit different to everybody else we've interviewed, a real London slang, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And that's that's sort of um, how we met troops. So everybody who's come on, same with Lee, judges. You know, you say you really like, just, you know, he just came on and again, he was... Very charismatic, a real passionate fan. And I think with some of these guys, they'll come on and they'll do a video and they'll realize the response it got. And then they'll think, oh, you know what, maybe next time I'll go back on again. And, you know, and then they've just sort of become characters like that, you know. And, and it's an no, interesting... I didn't know I didn't know any of them before. Yeah, that, that's fantastic. I mean, that's amazing. And, 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 uh... It's because we started our podcast pretty much just having all of our friends and family on until we actually started yeah. gaining traction. But um, you know, you use a word that that I know you were using it in a different way than than I'm about to. 
Um, mm-hmm. When you use the word character, um, and yeah. and and by by my understanding of the way you're using it, you mean he is an interesting person to listen to. Yeah. Um, I know a lot of people wonder and and ask whether certain of these gentlemen are in fact characters in the traditional sense of, of acting or, you know, on screen characters where, you know, they're, they're not, and, and, and you know them probably better than anybody else, but you know, are, are they, yeah. are, are you seeing the genuine article with these people? Are you seeing a character or a persona that they have kind of cultivated through Arsenal fan TV? No, these guys are the genuine characters. I mean, troops, right. For instance, who is as I said, a very, very charismatic guy. I think you only get half of troops. You want to go like when we went to <laughs> Germany with a guy. I mean, you want to tell him to shut up. I mean, he's he's like, he's so, he's, I, I, you know, you want to put a hidden camera with this guy. just to, He's so funny, naturally funny, and he just likes to talk about football, likes to talk about Arsenal. He, none of it is a put on. Same with DT. These are very passionate guys who, been following Arsenal for a long time, go to watch Arsenal home and away. They're passionate about their football club. And there's none of them that are, like, putting it on. If, if anybody was coming on Arsenal Fan TV with an act, I've said this before, they wouldn't come back on again. I wouldn't have them on. It's not about that. It's, I just want genuine football fans. Is that why and you never had guys... Mike back on after he was on a couple uh, <laughs> beginning of the season? Yeah, I, I came on with my no, son no, in no, November no. after the Derby and... Uh... <laughs> Uh, I got you laughing at, at, at a certain point with, with my, typ- my typical po- pointing fun at my own figure. And, uh, and but uh, yeah, that's. Uh, let, let, let me just say as well. You um, told me I was banned after it, that. <laughs> no way, no way. Let me just say as well. It's not for me as well. Even though I say those guys have got a real character about them, it's not just about people who've got a real character about them. Our platform's open to anybody. Anybody who wants to come and say something about Arsenal. So it's just when I say these guys have got a bit of character in them, that's kind of why they've become right. very popular, you know, where probably they get a lot more views than a lot of other fans that we interview because they're so charismatic. But we don't, you know, if somebody comes up to me and says they want to say something about the performance, we let them come on. And if you look at our videos, you can see that. You know, and one of the things we get accused of, and I'm sure this might be a question you might ask, is people will say sometimes, oh, it's the same people. I'm like, it's not the same people. There's four or five characters or four or five, you know, regulars, I like to call them, not even characters, Mm -hmm. regulars, that come on and say their piece every week. And we have them on regular because people really like to hear from them. You know, DT a few weeks ago, we didn't have him on that week. And I must have got about 30, 40 emails from people saying, Robbie, why didn't you have DT on? Uh, you know, have him on. You know, so these are popular. People like to hear from these guys. But our platform is available for everybody. You don't have to be a DT or a Troops or a Claude. You can just be a fan who's gone to the game and you've watched the game and you've got something to say. I mean, and I think, right, Sometimes when people criticize us for that, I think it's they're really unfair because you can see even the way we break our videos up. You don't have to watch DT. You don't have mm-hmm. to watch Troops. You mm-hmm. can watch other people if you wish. And as I said, you know, I feel because you just said a, um, a minute ago a very interesting thing, which I, I'm not going to I don't think you're wrong to do this. Um, it's a way of growing your platform. But you said that you started it off by having your friends, family, and people like that on your platform to, mm-hmm. to talk, to discuss Arsenal. And that's what a lot of, you know, you have other podcasts and you have other... Uh, Robbie, we didn't have a choice, <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, wasn't a, it, wasn't a, it wasn't a strategy. We just didn't have anyone else to talk to. <laughs> no, I hear you on that. I hear you on that. But you have, you have a lot of people who, have, who have, they'll have, like, um, they're quite clicky with mm-hmm. their podcasts or you know, their websites and stuff like that, where it's just a circle of friends who they feel that only they can speak about Arsenal. We're the only platform for Arsenal fans where you don't have to have 10,000 Twitter followers. You don't have to have a big Instagram account. You don't have to even have any followers on Twitter. You can just literally leave that game, 
you're an Arsenal fan and you want to say something about the performance, you could be black, you can be white, you can be fat like myself, you can be slim, you can be gay, you can be straight. You know, no matter who you are, you can come and talk about Arsenal on Arsenal Fan TV. And I'm very proud of that. So you know, I, f- I feel that sometimes it's a bit unfair, some of that criticism we get for having the same people. is simply not true. You only have need to look through our videos and you'll see that there's loads and loads of other people. We've interviewed thousands and thousands of people since we've been doing this thing, you know. So it's, you know... I, I think absolutely, and I, I think I remember it was an FA Cup match, maybe Lincoln, where you interviewed like a small kid. I want to say he was probably yeah. maybe 14 or under. And uh, so it goes to show that you do branch out. And, you know, those other guys are the, the – so lack of a better term, popular, right? So they're always going to get the retweets mm. and, and get most of that. that. Yeah. But for, as Mike said, there's so much more to your channel. So people should definitely go and see that and not just watch the yeah. couple that circulate after each match. Like go and see all of them because you do put a lot of content up, which is great. And you, like you said, you do cut it and you do have some, some different um, individuals on there, which is, which is awesome. I mean, it's really nice to see. And, you know, you even do charity ones like when you did Mike. And so that's. <laughs> <laughs> and, when you, and, yeah, when you, and when you record a bunch of Americans in California over the summer. But, but let me, let oh, me that go. Was brilliant. That was yeah. awesome. That was. And, and, and even the private videos you've recorded asking where my buddy Rio is for me a couple of times, which, which, which never, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> never, ever gets old. But let me, let me go a little bit further with regards to the – I mean because what you're saying is, is, is true. If, if a person takes the time to go on your website, to go on your YouTube page and look at the variety of videos, they will see 10 mm. to 15, and it's a lot more than the, you know, the two or three people who may have a reputation for, uh, you know, for being – let's just – generalized and say the reputation for being a little bit more spirited, a little bit more negative when things are going poorly than others might be because that's their yeah. personal expression. Um, mm-hmm. you, there's no question that Arsenal fan TV is more than, than simply pushing that agenda. If you, if it's even an agenda <clears throat> pushing those voices, but there is no, there's also no questioning the disparity in the clicks in the views. Um, you yeah. know, when you look on the page, you see that, um, you know, the, out of the 15 or 20 highest clicked on videos of all time, you know, 12 or 13 of them are two or three people, uh, post game interviews, um, which, mm-hmm. which is a shame because some of the other content that you've done, uh, you know, in, in Dortmund, uh, in Athens, which I also got a chance to, 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 mm-hmm. to walk past you while you were filming. Uh, I mean, that stuff is interesting. It's fascinating. It's funny. It gets you feeling good about Arsenal. Um, but mm. the, the ones that are getting the views are some of the most vociferous post-game rants from two or three people. And as yeah. a result, especially in the last two or three months, which is why the timing of this interview is, is I mean, we're, mm. you know, it, it's such so timely. Um, that seems to be what the generic impression of AFTV is to the world, right, rightly or wrongly, and I think it's wrongly, that's kind of what's happened. So, I mean, how, how are you kind of dealing with, other than the video you put out today, which I thought was compelling, uh, kind of explaining all the, the, the controversy and all that, how, how do you kind mm. of reconcile the fact that while you are putting out a lot of this content and you're a lot more than people think you are, the bulk of your of, of the attraction seems to be towards those negative, those negative rants. Mm. Well, I, as I was saying in that video today, we're having a very bad season. Also having a terrible season. Um, to, to, to some football fans, they don't think it's terrible because they're like, well, you, you still got a chance of top four. You're still in the FA Cup. But we all know as Arsenal fans, it's been a very traumatic season with the issues around the manager, the issues around players, You know, it's been a very bad season. So it's been a very negative season. So a lot of those sort of negative videos have resonated a lot with fans. And it's very, you know what, I don't know what I can do about that. I mean, I, I, we can only be an honest channel. If things ain't going right, we've got a report that things ain't going right. If Mm -hmm. things are going great, you'll see it on there that things are going great. Um, I don't know what I can do. You know, it's, 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 Controversy in football 
does get more, you know, more view. But I don't drive that. I'm not on the pitch playing. Do you, you view know? that? Do I'm, you view I'm, that? I'm not. Do you view that you have an image problem, though? I mean, not, again, it might not be a warranted one, but are, 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 is there is there a problem to be addressed or that can be addressed where, you know, where you're finding more and more people ignorant? And I don't mean ignorant in general. I mean, they're, they're, they're just not aware of the other things that you do are just associating, you know, Arsenal fan TV with that kind of negativity. And, and which is, I think, where a lot of the hate, a lot of the, you know, the hate and the violence starts to come in. But uh, yeah, but you know what? I think, you know what? You know why it doesn't worry me? Because I think it's a tiny minority. So if I look at the amount of views we get, if I look at the, the, the love we get, the, the emails and everything like that, Yes, there's a loud minority that may be on Twitter saying, oh, you know, the Arsenal fan TV, they, they deliberately want us to lose. I've never heard something so ridiculous in my life. You know, Arsenal fan TV only get clicks when we lose. That's a load of rubbish. Absolute rubbish. We wouldn't yeah. be here, would we? Because we don't lose that many games. All right, this <laughs> season, you know, this season, what, we lost six games? Yeah. Uh, what about all the rest? Mm-hmm. What do we do? Shut down for those? I mean, you know, it's it's a bit ridiculous. I find it. I mean, as I said, it's 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 football, really. I, if I'm being honest with you, it's football. It's like it's like, for instance, uh, Crystal Palace beating Chelsea last week is a massive shock. Becomes massive news. A game that would have been just probably regulation views for a newspaper. All of a sudden, they move that to that is their biggest story right. by far because it's such a shock. It's very similar in what we do. I mean, you just can't. There's nothing you can do. I mean, even if you try to spin the most positive of spins, if you lose 5-1 at Bayern Munich, right, <laughs> there's going to be a lot of people, right? It's such a shock. It's such a big story that a lot of people are going to be interested to find out what Arsenal fans have got to say. See when so that happens, I, I, when that I happens, really, I just I, I go into a shell and I don't want to hear anything about Arsenal or see anything about Arsenal. But like, like it's a, it's an interesting phenomenon that 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 does pique so much interest. Like, as soon as that game is over, I turn off the television and I just you know and I rock myself you know in a dark room yeah. crying for two hours. But I, I don't go on YouTube necessarily to yeah, to, to hear it, other but, people miserable. Yeah. But it, but it <laughs> that might that might be therapy for some people. There's there's a lot of people who've said to me that you know what they find it like it is almost like therapy they'll be like you know what it's good to hear that other Arsenal fans are hurting like how I'm mm-hmm. hurting after that 5-1 defeat you know so and then obviously I do know that you're going to get fans from other clubs that are going to come on and say oh well, what are these Arsenal fans you know what they got to say about it I do I'll probably go on a Tottenham one mm-hmm. if they lost 5-1 to hear what they had to say as well you know what I mean but it's, it's natural football banter I'll pick up that paper and I'll look at that Crystal Palace thing because it's such a shock. Yeah. Wasn't expecting Palace to beat Chelsea. So I look on it now and I say to myself, there's nothing I can do to control that unless we try to do what Arsenal Football Club or Man United Football Club or any of those football clubs do when they lose, which is try to put a positive spin on everything. And that's why people don't watch it because they're like, well, you know what? These guys are being fake. We just got beaten five one. What are you trying to tell us? Yeah, that everything's good. Well, and even I don't if you can, see, I don't want to see Oxley Chamberlain's stats. We just got beaten five one. I want to find out why. What? What is it? Why have we been beaten five one? What's the reason behind it? What was the manager's response? How did the players react? You know what I mean? And, no, and, and I think that's just what you hear on our channel. Um, absolutely, and and even after this week where we beat West Ham three nil, you still have the, the 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 fans who are coming in and they get negative again. Well, it's just West Ham. This hasn't solved anything. It's like yeah. just enjoy the fucking win for for true, the small. But if, I, but if I'm being honest with you, that's true what you say there. But if I'm being honest with you, the general mood. Right, you would so. This is what I say sometimes. And some of those fans are reflecting the general mood, mm-hmm. the general mood around the place after the game. And Mike will probably tell you because he was there. It was a stay of execution. Is that is how people felt. People yeah. were like, "Oh yeah, oh yeah, we beat a West Ham. They're crap. They're right down the bottom of the division, you know." But why didn't we do that 
you know, against Chelsea? Why don't we do the yummy? Because we've been on such a poor run. Yeah. So it's only natural, I think, that fans are thinking that way. And when people say to me things like, well, look, you're still having on. And some of these guys are reflecting the mood. Yeah, absolutely. Of how people feel. And people have just got to understand that it's real. It's this. This is also fan TV because we interview just ordinary fans. The emotion is real. And the emotion on the night was not one of widespread celebration because we beat West Ham. It was like, okay, great victories. Good for we've won again. Scored some nice goals. Good to see a few players sort of coming back to form. But it's only West Ham. Let's not get carried away. And we still got no chance of winning the title. We still got this situation with the manager where we don't know whether he's coming or going. But yeah, you know what I mean, so it's people need to be real about these things. That is the general mood at the moment. I'm sure Mike, who's over at the moment, will tell you that. That is the feeling around the place at the moment. Right. So, yeah. so Robbie, has Arsenal, the club, ever interfered in your activities, either positively or negatively, or have they just kind of been a backseat? Yeah, I'd say they've been a backseat. They've never interfered in us negatively. Mm-hmm. Um, so I give them, you know what, I give them respect for that. They, they've not, I've met, I've, I met Ivan Gazidis over in um, L.A. In L.A.? Actually, yeah, I remember, I I remember seeing there. you. I remember seeing you talking to him for a while. I was I, I was fascinated. Yeah. I wanted to be a fly on the yeah. wall for that conversation. <laughs> I had a good talk with him for about an hour. Um, it's really interesting because when they go open when bar go too. Abroad, you get more access to them when they're abroad than when they're in England. You yeah. know what I mean? So, but um, I had a really in- interesting talk with him at that time, and he and one of the things that he said to me, which I found really nice actually is that he said to me that, you know what, I, I, I think what you guys do is very professional. You do it in a very professional way. And he goes, I do, he goes, even though I get a lot of criticism of the fans on your channel, he goes, I do think that it's right to have a platform where fans can have a voice. He goes, I like it. So he goes, keep up the work. And they you didn't know? want a piece also, of it or anything? <laughs> they weren't trying nah, to... Nah. <laughs> I don't think did, they want a piece of it. Did, did the uh, you know, did the open? I think they I think they may have learned lessons from what we do because they've also got a YouTube channel now, mm-hmm. and um, they're also trying to do certain things with their YouTube. Obviously, they can't be. I don't think they can be as open and honest as we are because they have to kind of toe the party line. But they've never really, they've never really interfered in 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 what we do. As a matter of fact, the other night. Um, which I thought was quite nice. Is that I got a call from Arsenal, you know, just saying to me, you know, um, if there's any problems with safety or anything, you know, they'll keep an eye out. And which I found that's that, nice. That I, I was that was kind of nice, you know what I mean? So I've never had no problems with the club. They've never stopped me from going to any functions. Or I used to think that at first. I used to think oh, I might turn up one day and they just strong on me at the place or something like that yeah but they haven't so well you know and, and that's interesting know. because give, given the the some of the the unfortunate skirmishes and stuff uh, on sunday after man city i wondered whether there was going to be any type of you know the club saying i you know whether you're at fault for this or not and and i don't think you mm. are at all no uh, we just we, we can't have this you know powder keg on our on our mm. on our grounds can you take this yeah. off off site uh, but it sounds like they did quite the opposite and actually called no, and offered, they, they did, offered you some yeah. security or, or the concept no, they of did it. the opposite. They, they, they did the opposite. Um, and uh, the head of communication said to me afterwards, let's hope we win tonight. You know what I mean, so <laughs> I was like, yeah, you're right. And, you know, I, I thought that was, I have to say, I thought that was very nice. When 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 um, the call was made and I heard it, was, I was thinking, oh, no. <laughs> um, and, they, you know, but I thought that was quite nice. And, you know, listen, um, we don't have, like, media accreditation where we get to go inside the stadium and stuff like that. But it's, I don't mind that, you know what I mean? I, I don't mind our little independence and, and doing what we're doing. And, and also, I like to think that we try to always cooperate with the club as well on that aspect. I mean, when that incident happened the other day, the first thing we did was just stop filming until that little incident dispersed you know yeah and i do the same if i go to like i go to when i was in uh, liverpool the other day the police officer 
at the ground came up to me and he said, listen, guys, he goes, um, I'm not sorry, I don't mind you filming, but can you film a bit further down the road? Which wasn't ideal for us, but I did it. I always cooperate with the police, I always cooperate with the, the clubs, you know, because, you know, you, you know, of course, you want to be responsible in what you're doing, you know, so I always cooperate and I would never, you know, I would never put people's safety at risk. Um, just to get a, just to get a couple of videos out, I wouldn't do that. So, um, but yeah, I mean, no, I've asked the, the, the so to answer that question. Arsenal, the football club, uh, uh, have been fine to us. Uh, nice. You know, I, 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 I'm not going to fault them at all in anything that they've done. That must be very reassuring. I mean, that that's that's because because. You need them to, to – I mean, the, the more they, they start to alienate and, and be concerned about uh, what's going on, the, the, that changes, I guess, the atmosphere of all the interviews and all of that. So yeah. the, a good relationship between the club and the, and the independent fan television uh, is, is important. So Yeah, I, I, I want to have a good relationship with them. Um, I want to be independent, but I want to have a good relationship with them. I want to – Listen, we, we, we ultimately we all want the same thing, which is we want a successful club. Um, we want to be winning things. We want to, you know, so, you know, yeah, you're not the opposition that's... party. I mean, you're, <laughs> you're, exactly. you're, a fan, exactly. you're a fan channel. You're not, you're not, you know, you're not the protest. Exactly. We allow so. people to be honest. We, we, we won't just because, you know, we w- want to have a good relationship with Arsenal, but if there's a protest going on, we'll show it, yep. you know? You know, we'll show it. If people are unhappy about Arsene Wenger, we'll show it. Mm-hmm. If people are pleased about Wenger, we'll show it. You know what I mean? That's just how we are. We're just there to report on what the fans are saying on that particular game. So that, I mean, that is the, the post, the pre and post game interviews. And, and you know, I, I promised I'd talk about some of the other content that you do because that is yeah. the content that personally i find most entertaining and and educational actually i mean it's it, uh, educational maybe is a stretch but but i mean like it's 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 fascinating I, and the one uh, yeah. the one i watched a couple of weeks ago um you you had gone to dortmund because you're you're very correct in pointing out there is a atmosphere problem at the emirates i mean i yeah I, earlier today uh i was at Craven Cottage, atmosphere there so so because but it's a beautiful place to go. Last night at QPR, yeah. last Tuesday night at Watford, uh, I mean, and and God, Monday night at Palace is going to be something else. Uh, yeah. That that is what I wish Emirates could be, and what I remember Highbury to be. Um, yeah. So you're <laughs> you you got a point there, <laughs> and and to demonstrate that point, you went to Dortmund, which is the place that I would point to as being ground zero for incredible atmosphere. And yeah. I, I mean, just seeing you standing there on the in the yellow wall, holding that flag over your head while your Never Walk Alone was on, you look like a kidnapped victim <laughs> <laughs> who was being held against his will. Yeah, I was but, never going to sing that. Sorry. No, it, you were doing you were doing all the Dortmund stuff, except you just you had your mouth cemented shut during that song. I never realized yeah. that you sung that. But, but um, yeah, I mean, that's that, not the tune they come out to. That that's a fascinating video. Um, you must have had a. I mean, did you just go midweek, uh, or I guess that was probably um, was that a midweek game? Yeah. It was, well, it was a Friday night game, and it's funny enough is uh, we went there on the Friday. And then we flew back like very early in the morning just to get back in time for the West Brom game. Why I bothered to do that? I oh, don't geez, know, yeah. that, would have, that might have been a good one. <laughs> <laughs> I had about I had about an hour and a half sleep that day, man. And then to witness what I saw from that game, I tell you, I was like, <laughs> why did I? Why did I just stay in Germany? But yeah, I mean, you know, the, that that video came about because uh, we're doing this whole feature on atmosphere. Um, when, when I saw Ivan Gazidis in LA. That's one of the things I was asking him about the most. I said, Ivan, I go, you've got this world-class stadium, the best stadium in the Premier League. And this is not just from an Arsenal hat on. This is a person who's been to every ground in the Premier League. Arsenal football ground is the best football ground in the Premier League, bar none, right? I've been lucky enough to go and see their hospitality stuff in action. It's absolutely incredible. So I'm saying what you 
<laughs> yeah, I, I've actually done the prawn sandwiches thing one time before. And, uh, I must admit, it is nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, no one's trying to down prawn sandwiches. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> I went into, I went into, I went into a box, and uh, I have to say, it is very nice. If you, if you had that box with some of your friends, if you could afford it, you know, which it's an insane amount of money, but it is very nice. But I'm saying to Ivan, I'm saying, listen, you've got this great corporate section money making machine it's brilliant and i understand why you've got that etc cetera, etc cetera. but why you've got this world class why can't we turn this place into a fortress if we turn it into a fortress and we put the same amount of um effort that we put into the corporate section into the fan experience for the ordinary fans we create a fortress which means we'd win more games because it'd be a hard place to come to and we'll have a fantastic atmosphere there and he was saying to me, well, come with some, he said to me, give me some suggestions, come with some suggestions, and I'll listen to them. So we did a podcast initially where we uh, discussed a load of, um, you know, ways to improve the atmosphere. And I, I asked people to send in their suggestions. We got absolutely inundated. And they're like, this was sort of like my next stage of it, where what I said is I'm going to go to a ground that's got an incredible atmosphere and see some of these things in action and see whether they could work at the Emirates. So that's why we went to Dortmund. I've got a friend who's a Dortmund fan and he got us a ticket. So we got him to go on the yellow wall and it was incredible. And I don't think everything they do in Dortmund could work because English crowds are a little bit different. They don't like to be led on all of the songs and stuff like that. They do like their spontaneous chanting and, Obviously, we don't have standing terraces in, in the Premier League because of what happened at Hillsborough. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, you know, there's a lot of differences. Um, but there's a lot of things they do that we could adapt at the Emirates. Number one thing being is having a couple of singing sections, which I think overnight would transform the atmosphere. And part of the process of doing that video, and uh, it, there is an end game to it in that we're going to put together this dossier and take it to um, Arsenal and say, right, what can you do now to try and act on these things? Because it's one of the things I feel passionate about. We, I don't think it's difficult to change the atmosphere at the Emirates Stadium. But somebody has to take that mm-hmm. step. Somebody has to do something. And if I can help to bring about a change in that, it'd be really, I'd feel really proud of that, you know, because it can, I mean... It's, you know, it's needed. I mean, there's no, there's no question that the atmosphere is the least impressive thing about going to a game. Yeah, at the of Emirates. course. So, and how can you have such an impressive stadium? And the atmosphere is, the atmosphere, and we know the atmosphere can be good because if it's a big game, if also playing Tottenham or Man United or the atmosphere, oh, it, is com- it comes across on television in the states sometimes. Yeah. I mean, I, you can say, "Oh, I can tell that atmosphere that day was unbelievable." Yeah, it's, yeah. it's electric. Champions but if we're playing, yeah, but if we're playing Sunderland now, or we're playing Burnley, where everybody's just c- turning up, expecting it to be, you know, we're going to turn these teams over, and if it's not quite going our way, everyone's just stood up there, just waiting for things to happen. Now, it, to be honest, it's not just the Emirates. I, I was at Man City's ground, um, the Etihad, um, earlier on in the season. I got invited up there by this betting company. I went to Man City, played Middlesbrough, and it, it, I think it's worse than the Emirates. And I think it is even going as an away fan to all these grounds. You know, you notice with the home fans sometimes, <clears throat> um, particularly the big clubs, if it ain't going their way, the crowd doesn't really get behind them. Yeah. yeah. Whereas in Dortmund and in Germany and that, regardless, the crowd get. I mean, the, the most impressive atmosphere I witnessed this season was when we went away to um, Paris Saint Germain, and they were rocking. I mean, it was unbelievable. The atmosphere, the the upper tier, the lower tier, everything was just bouncing in that place. They they had a brilliant atmosphere, and I'd love to see that at the Emirates. And you know, one one of the things that I picked up at Dortmund when we did that feature is that people obviously having a lot of fun when they go to watch Dortmund. And I don't think that's missing a bit from, you know, we, we have fun. We want to see our team play and, you know, we, we, we enjoy when we're winning, but we're not having that like just fun regardless, you know, mm-hmm. 
I think you, uh, that sort of used to exist back in the day. I don't think that exists as much at football no more. I don't know. We're always moaning about the price of the hot dogs or the price of this or that. If you go to stand-ups, the steward's telling you to sit down. And, you know what I mean? It's just not... I didn't see nothing like that in Dortmund. you know what I mean? It's just like people yeah. going to that game to have a load of fun. And hopefully and the, Dortmund win. And those dudes shouting through those megaphones in German kind of gave me... Uh, it, it scared me a little bit, but that's my own personal <laughs> yeah. problem. <laughs> <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of hid behind something, but, uh, but, but I, it did get the, uh, the crowd riled up. A couple of, couple of comments. Number one, that conversation you had with Ivan Gazidis in L.A., which was an event yeah. I was at. Uh, Andy, where were you that night? Um, not invited, Mike. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not. Have, I'm not in snuck, the. I'm not in the inner circle of of, I, I, of certain I have, flicks. I should have snuck you in in my in my kit. But uh, um, <laughs> how how much do you think the uh, the free open bar of, of of top shelf liquor helped Ivan loosen up enough to give you a lot of feedback? Because <laughs> that, that was some, helped. that was that some good stuff helped. right there. Um, yeah, I mean and, it, it was amazing. To, as, as I said, the, like you go abroad and. The access you get. I mean, they gave everybody that night a free kit as well, didn't they? I've never seen them they do did. that in England. And some you know, people, some, yeah. some people stole a second one and, t- and took two. Uh, I did not. Joey, I, I might have fell into that. I think I fell into that category. <laughs> Joey, yeah. I think I, I think our friend Joey Murphy may have done that and then promptly lost another kit. So, uh, which he's still looking for. He's bumbling around London looking a, for that right now. There was um, a lot of drug fans there that night. Uh, that open oh my bar God. was really that open bar was good. <laughs> and, and, Jamie, and Jamie Fox roaming around. Uh, that that Jamie was a thrill. Fox. Let me let yeah, me tell you was, by the way, Arsenal cool. America. Arsenal America is responsible. This is ending up going off track a little bit, but that that the the access for just normal American fans to be able to go to that event was was all due to the relationship that Arsenal America has with the club and, and um, yeah. just a just overall phenomenal experience that night. And, 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 and also, uh, Andy's banging they, his head they, against the wall because he was in his hotel in LA that night. I, you know what? To be fair, I've been, I've, to be fair, I was at dinner and Freddie Lunsberg came and sat right next to us and I didn't have enough balls to go and say hi to him. Um, <laughs> you know where but, he had just come from? Well, he'd come from Ch- the event. Moment. Chatting to all of us at the event. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've got to say, I mean, like, that's twice now. I, I went when I came over when Arsenal was in New York, and that was incredible. Yeah, and was. the one in L.A., that was brilliant. I mean, I, you know, it was – I came back to England, and I was saying to fans, I was like, you know what? Stop if sliding Arsenal Americans. go to America, Arsenal go to America again, you've got to get out there, man. It's just it's brilliant. And what I found um, with the American fans, that their knowledge – of Arsenal. So I say this a lot to people over here um, in, in England because the fascinating thing about it is that you guys over there probably watch more Arsenal games live mm-hmm. than fans over here. I mean, unless you go to games, so obviously I'm very lucky I get to go to all the games home and away, right? But, you know, 95% of the fans over here don't. They only get to see... Um, what's shown on TV. And remember, not all games over here the are three shown o'clock Saturday, on TV. Yeah, the 3 o'clock Saturday games are generally not. Are, are, isn't that right? Well, there's no, there's no 3 o'clock Saturday games that are shown live. There's no, you know, there's, you know, there's, Arsenal are not on live every single week. I mean, we're, all right, we're live this week, we're live next week. Yeah, I think West Ham was live on, West Ham game wasn't on live, you know. So, I always say to fans over here, I'll go, you know, when you're there, sometimes, you know, you, you get fans in England who want to diss fans from America or diss oh, fans from abroad. That never oh, what, do you, what, do you, what do you know? And I'm like, oh, dear, well, actually, I think they know more than you guys because they get to watch every single game live. So they can analyze the performance of the team sometimes way better than over here because you, all we get to see is a little highlight package where you see three, four minutes of the game. So, you know, and Robbie, I, when I went and on that, was ref, that was reflected in the knowledge yeah. that was coming from the fans over there. It was unbelievable. Yeah. When I went on in November after this, after the Derby with my son, um, I, I made the mistake of watching it on, 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 watching it back on YouTube and looking at the comments. 
<laughs> and the first comment was, as soon as I heard his stupid American accent, I turned it off. And then the second comment was, <laughs> the, sec- the second comment was, uh, what does this fat American Usmanov look like? A look, look alike? No, about football. <laughs> I think so I wrote that, that one. Too. <laughs> yeah, I think I think Andy wrote that one. But well, that okay, was, you know, uh, what again, a, what a again, lot of people. I think this is something. This is something that we've sort of helped to address. I think on Arsenal fan TV, the fact that you know foreign fans used to be the people who get blamed for everything. They get blamed for the atmosphere at the Emirates. They get blamed for this. They get they don't know nothing. And I'm saying to them, hold on, nah, these guys watch more live Arsenal than you guys, yeah. right? So you need to have some respect for them. Plus as well, do you know what time they wake up? Well, I was about to, to say, these games? I go to the pub right? and then, at 5 a.m. and it's 200 people in there, you know, and it's like, yeah. I, I'm not sure there's another sport in the world where that, that would garner that amount of passion, you know, at 5 a.m. Yeah. And, and it, you know what, when you start to, when we start to kind of portray that to people over here and tell them what, you know, Fans in Australia, what time they wake up? Fans in, they're like, well, actually, you know what? Yeah, respect. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. it's changing. I, I, I really think now that the fans over here in the UK, are, they've got a lot of respect for the fans abroad. They really are losing that sort of, you know, everybody used to think, oh, you know, because oh, oh, we're from... We're from London or, you know, we know more than you. That's rubbish. That is absolute rubbish because, you know, you guys are actually getting to watch more of Arsenal and can analyse it more than we can over here because we don't get every game live. Right. You know, we don't get every game live. One last statement so, on the atmosphere. Uh, on Wednesday night, I uh, was watching the game with, with, with some, uh, you know, some of my friends and, and, after the, uh, I forget if it was after the second or third goal, we stood up and we stayed standing up for probably four or five minutes. And of course, yeah. Stewart comes up to us, tells us to sit down. Do you know, Robbie, we were in the last fucking row of the stadium. <laughs> there was nobody. <laughs> we were on the clock and there were, we were in row oh, 17 no, it's, of, it's... Of, of block 118. There was no one behind us. <laughs> we were like, are you yeah, kidding? No, it's me? terrible. And, you know, I, I've, I can't even feel sorry for the stewards, right? Because I remember... Like, he blamed, I, I he blamed quite, the supervisor. He's like, I'm sorry, my supervisor yeah. told me I had to tell you to sit down. No, and <laughs> like, he's you probably telling the truth, to be honest. I mean, I've spoken I've spoken to quite a few of them stewards, and they, that's what they said. They're like, you know what? Sometimes when we're telling people to sit down, we think it's ridiculous. But they go... Um, what, what one guy was saying to me one time, they go, there's CCTV there. And if they're not seen to make you guys sit down, they could lose their job. Mm. It's ridiculous. I mean, it, where I, I'm lucky that where I, where I, um, well, I don't sit down. I stand in the North Bank. For some reason, they they allow all the fans in that area to stand. Um, you know, it's it's obviously it's obviously because to do with what happened at Hillsborough and everything. It's a very sensitive issue over here in the UK. I think everybody knows that we need safe standing over here now at football. Mm-hmm. Um, there's loads of fans who want to stand up. You know, when you go to an away, the, the the crazy thing about it is that when you go to a lot like, at Crystal Palace um, on Monday, every single Arsenal fan that goes to that game will be stood up. Nobody will sit down in the seats. Not one of them. Right. And none of the stewards will attempt to tell them to sit down because they know none of them will. Yeah. But they'll be going and telling all of the home fans to sit down. You know, it's, it is just a ridiculous. And that is another thing that kills the atmosphere. Um, at stadiums in the UK, and it is a big problem, something that they really need to do something about. Well, it was funny because uh, probably four weeks, five weeks ago, we did a pod, and the question was, what if you woke up and you were uh, Stan, what would you do? And I think f- four of us collectively all said... Leave. <laughs> well, f- <laughs> four of us collectively all said we would change the stadium. We would. We, we all went into detail about how, what we would do, and uh, so it was interesting that we all went that route. Um, yeah. So, Robbie, but the problem is, yeah, the problem is, is that it's, it's not down to that. It's just, it's down to it's a real political thing over here. Oh yeah. Um, a lot of people died at Hillsborough, and mm-hmm. you know, the, the, even that's not even been resolved yet after all these years. And I just think that nobody. None of the politicians or anything got the political will 
to go against, you know, all seaters at the moment because it's still an ongoing thing for all those people who lost their lives at Hillsborough. Yeah. So um, it's a real sensitive one. But I think one day we will see more safe standing introduced. But until that happens, they can still be more sensible with, you know, you know, like... Yeah, you know, Mike's saying there, you know, he stood up and right at the back. I mean, come on, it's yeah. just ridiculous. So, Robbie, with our last question to kind of wrap things up, do you have a future vision for Arsenal Fan TV? Is there an avenue that you're looking to go down, or are you just going to kind of stick with what's happening right now and just let things naturally occur as the seasons go on? Well, I've got so many plans. Um, I want to add... Um, more content. I want to do more um, cool things. We're actually at, in the process at the moment of setting up um, an Arsenal Fan TV Young Guns, which is like an Arsenal Fan TV but aimed at a much younger audience of uh, uh, kids. Hey, it's, so, I've, got, I've got a boy. If you need, if you need an American correspondent for that, yeah, uh, hook it up, hook him up, man. You know what I mean? Because uh, that's coming on. That's going to be starting within the next couple of weeks. Um, I think for, at the start of May. We should be launching that. So, um, yeah, we're doing that. I've got uh, the Man Like Robbie channel, which is like a general football channel that I'm really um, working hard on at the moment as well. So, you know, and just really new, you know, just creating as much good content for Arsenal fans as possible, uh, trying to get the quality better, trying to get videos up quicker, you know, just working on lots of stuff like that. So hopefully, you know, yeah, hopefully we can go from strength to strength. And, I, I, and one of the things I would also love to do is like start getting out there and really meeting fans from abroad, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot more as well. Um, so I know, like you guys do this Gooner graphing, which I saw. Oh, you got you, you to. You got to gotta find yeah, your way there sometime. I, of course, I, you got your you got your job at the game though. That, uh, yeah, that yeah. Well, maybe you know, maybe one week. Because what I was thinking of the other day is that maybe. If there's something big, you know, maybe I could, you know, get someone to do it that week from Arsenal and I go and do it from... from I do, it all depends, you know what I mean? It's, it's yeah. just something we're looking at at the moment, so... But, well, next year's um, Gunagra is scheduled for the FA Cup round four weekend, so there is a slim possibility that you might not have a game to record over here, and you might be able to make it over. Nah, we'll be in the FA Cup, mate. Don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think this year when you did it, what, you cor- correspond with us playing Chelsea or something? There's no way I was missing. Well, I wish I'd have come yeah. there, actually. Well, that was, that was <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, just... Thank you, Robbie. I appreciate your time. You've been very generous with your time, not just in this interview, but uh, every time I've, I've come upon you and every time anyone I know has come upon you, either at the Tallington, uh, on the street, in L.A., in New York, just um, a friendly guy who is managing something that's growing very quickly as best he can uh, and, and quite well, uh, in my opinion. And I just, you know, I, I, I do understand where a lot of the – uh, feelings come from from a lot of people, but I do genuinely feel that 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 if if you watched more of the videos, if you watched more of the yeah. content, you saw all that other stuff. If you saw you and Claude doing a video from the Acropolis in, in Greece, which was just hilarious, which we, <laughs> oh, which, yeah, which, which my missing which my missing friend Rio and I walked past you while you were taping. Um, <laughs> yeah, I remember that. I remember that. That was incredible. That was uh, yeah, that's one of the one of the great things about this is some of the cool places we've got to go to. And Claude, nev- Claude never heard of the movie Three Hundred. <laughs> he never. <laughs> I mean, that's. <laughs> I'm sorry, but that if you can't laugh oh about that, and, and, and hey, just make, you know, he's make hilarious. That guy. I mean, listen, uh, um, listen. We're not perfect on Arsenal fan TV. You know, what I mean, um, we know that we we know that we don't always please absolutely everybody, but we're just trying to be um, genuine. We're trying to be a real channel, and you know, we're just we're we're, we're just trying to make it better and better and. You know what? If the team starts playing better, that helps us a lot as well. Because then, you know, we got we got a lot of more positive things to talk about. You know, imagine, so, ima- imagine what Arsenal fan TV would have been like in two thousand three, two thousand four. I mean, the the uh, or or that that would have been amazing. That would have been amazing. That would have been what a journey that would have been. Yeah. You know, ah, oh, you know, you never know. Maybe one day in the future, we'll be reporting on something like that. I mean, listen. 
it's not all doom and gloom. We've had great moments since we, you know, back to back FA Cup wins and things like that where we've been there. I remember we, when we won the FA Cup, we did about 40 odd videos that day. It was brilliant. Mm-hmm. But some people don't remember those things. They only remember the negatives. You know what I mean, so what can I do? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That is the way it goes. And, and I want to give a yeah. special thanks uh, and a shout out to Steve Manios, who is a, uh, uh, a very good friend of mine, uh, yeah, someone I've met, met through Arsenal. Uh, he comes over here and I mean, I, he was recently on your channel. I know that you guys are, are mates and, um, yeah. and, and he, he linked the two of us together um, just to kind of solidify our, our previous meetings and, and made this interview possible. So thank you very much, Steve. I appreciate you know, it. You, you, know, you know what I love about Steve, right? He's just like, He's all about the Arsenal community sort of thing. I, I, I saw when I was over there in LA and, you know, I stayed with Steve and that and his passion for Arsenal. And, you know, even when he comes over here to the UK, I just really love the guy. He's, he's, he's a brilliant, such a genuine guy. And his passion for Arsenal and that, like the Arsenal community, yep. is awesome. He's awesome. Yep. It is. And that's what it's all about, my friend. Yeah, definitely. That's, what, that's why we're here. Well, thanks again, Robbie. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, Andy, you anything else? No, Robbie, thank you so much. And hopefully when I'm home this summer, I'll get to come up to London and, and take in a match with you. Definitely. Come and look us up. Cheers.